<laughs> Welcome back, guys. The Unicorns of Love are just one game away ah, from one. the Spring Split Finals. And SK Gaming will need to change something up and pull out all the stops here unless they want to settle for a chance to play third, to place third yeah. against H2K Gaming. Unicorns, this is their initial split. They qualify to the LCS at the end of last year, and they are just rampaging in best of fives. And they've had some pretty insane results. They came back, if people remember, in the promotion tournament against yep. Millennium. They were down 2-0, won three games in a row. Beat Team Solo mid 2-0 at IM San Jose. Then lost to Cloud9 in the final, obviously. We ignore that. We, yeah. Europe, <laughs> go, go, go. Now, another best out of five. We look at the pick and ban phase. I think what Leviathan was talking about is, is very smart. You can keep the 280 carry bans, Grace and Lucian. And then you just ban the Morgana instead of Lulu. Because what you have to remember is you don't ban Lulu to remove a Jokamore composition from SK Gaming. You ban it because it's the, been the main champion for in Raided. And I wouldn't fear a support pick that much. I'd be more afraid of the Morgana first pick potentially coming in and being super annoying. But we're going to have to see if Unicorns are fine giving it over to SK. You don't need to do that because the third and final ban from SK is in fact oh, the wow. Morgana, leaving the Syndra available if Power of Evil wants to run and he has last pick. And he has last well. pick. Means for uh, SK Gaming here, got to be a little bit careful. You can still do Z into it if they want it. Going with the Shivana first pick. Wow, Instalock, no less. I mean, Vesichachi lost the lane, Sion versus Shivana in the last game. He lost his tower on his own, but you can still take that matchup and you instead just use the Sion and his ulti to engage fights for yourself. With Morgana being taken away, we saw in Raided play Annie in game two and had some very good engages. Despite having some big mistakes in the laning phase, his engages in the team fights were spot on. And this is the champion that's been banned so often against Hillisang, despite him being better on Thresh and Morgana. Well, we'll find out what they decide to lock in. And I think, you know, we've asked some questions that I, I, I'm going to say out loud. How does it rated plan to impact the game with Forgiven when you contrast him to Hillisang and Vardex, to Kasing and Hyanin, to Yellow Star and Steelback? It's not on the same tier as the other semi-final support players. Hillisang has opted for that Thresh. His Morgana was fantastic, his Thresh has been fantastic, and it is the same duo yeah. again for again the Unicorns of Love. It's Jinx, and then you pair it with some sort of CC, so you can now either bind them and then trap, or you can now hook them with a Thresh, and then you trap after, and you get this CC chain, and then at level six, you get enough time to deal damage that they're low enough for your ulti on Jinx, to basically execute them and give you another kill. It's what's been working for Unicorns of Love in quarterfinals, in the semifinals, we'll get the same setup. I still like the Shivana in the, in the sense that you know Visichachi is mainly been playing tanks, unless he's pull out something new or unexpected from him. And if he does pick a, ch a tank into Shivana, then you won't do a whole lot because Shivana is going to counter you, she has to percent damage and she's gonna win the laning phase and just start pushing down your tower if it's a Maokar sign she's against. So in that case, I like it. Freddy, however, has been very, very greedy in this series here. There's so many times where he's been non-stop pushing his lane or walking through the enemy jungle and simply being caught out, giving over free kills to the Unicorns of Love, which they've been very good at using to always get something else. And the thing is, the Fisher, it's not the first time. No, I mean, you mentioned true. this during the spring split. You actually mentioned it to the point that Freddy's mother called him and said, stop being greedy in lane because I heard Deficio say, and you got yelled at by him. That's true. And it's, it is a problem that is ongoing. Let's see if this time around Freddy can at least let his team get some more objectives. What well, I do like is Spencer and going for Lee Sin. And I like the Caitlyn here from him. But it's funny with SK Gaming and, and jungle picks because other regions, they love Sijuani. I mean, Sijuani is just up there as one of the best junglers. And you'd also normally take a Rek'Sai or an Italy over the Lee Sin, but he clearly prefers that one when it comes to early ganking pressure from himself. And it's just somewhat the same setup from SKS in game two where they won. You have the Caitlyn, you can pick the Nami here, and you have Caitlyn Nami, one of the best dual lanes. You can go any again and just not get hooked and you're gonna win that lane as well. So SK Gaming has gone back to what worked in game two. Bully your lanes, we need an assassin now for the mid lane. And you have almost the exact same setup just a Shivana instead of Morgana top lane. 
I'd like it to be an AP-based assassin based on all the physical damage SK's got together. There is some Shimano does have... It is mixed damage. Yeah. It is mixed, let's be fair as well. Got the Annie as well to add but some magic damage. The one thing that is good about the Zed is the fact that SK Gaming have got all of that mid-game power. They've got roaming, they've got wave clear, they've got a very similar team comp to what helped them win game two. Yes, this is an SK Gaming team comp. You have strong lanes all around. You got one three one set up. Zed in one lane, Shivan in the other one. And basically what you do, as we know, is you aim to push down these outer turrets just 2v2 and one-on-one -on -one in your lanes very fast, and you open up for Zed to start roaming around the map if he gets to push in his lane. If Syndra is the pick up, they can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If Orianna is the pick up for Power Weaver, he has to surrender that mid lane and just sit and honestly wait for the minions to come into him. He's not going to be able to get too much pressure on the Zed itself, and he's going to wait then for Zed to start roaming around with the Lee Sin, because the 2v2 matchup is already in favor of SK Gaming just because of the jungle pick. Udia cannot do anything in terms of early damage compared yeah. to Elise Sin. He can, however, go in for the counter gank and disengage the whole thing. Bear slap in the face, stun them, and start moving away. And if it's a longer fight with Phoenix Stance, then he can do a lot of damage. But SK Gaming is obviously looking for the short, quick ones. Burst them into 2v2 around the mid lane. Well, we'll find out if SK can get those short engages. Enraged will need to have his mid-game engages from match two. Let's uh, be a little bit more careful in lane. The Caitlyn Annie can punish Jinx yeah. if they get on him, though, let's be honest. And it was the Orion again for Power People. And while in the last game where Unicorns ran exactly this composition here, they had the stronger late game just due to the Cho'Gath being so hard to play in late team fights versus Kite comps. So they could sit back and just farm. And SK Gaming allowed them to do it. This game is not going to be the same. SK Gaming here is going to bully every single lane. They're going to win the top lane. They're going to get that tower. They're going to win the bottom lane. Unless you get hooked on the tower like we saw before. And they're going to have to pressure in the mid lane. So they're the ones now who can do everything in the early game in terms of bully, unicorns of love, roam around with your assassin and your Lee Sin in the jungle. Just like they did in game one. Yep. And unicorns have to be so careful with the fights they decide to take. They cannot afford to do what they did in game two as well, where they took a bad dragon fight, despite being a lot yeah. weaker, ended up almost getting aced, and simply just fell way too far behind, gave up so many towers to SK Gaming, and the game was over. You cannot do that here. You need to play very safe. You need defensive warding, so you can see the roam coming from the mid lane, and then you just got to simply try and buy as much time as possible. Well, what we've learned from the four, three games that have come before this, when Unicorns of Love and SK have got scaling comps, it's Unicorns that come out ahead. When it is SK that have the playmaking champions, it is them that is able to force. And I think Sven Skeron on Lee was very, very impactful. We did have to it drop was, out of that yeah. pick some bands. And also just to look at the way to play the game for the Unicorns of Love here. Because again, they know they, they won't be winning any of the lanes. You have to go for that lane swap. Last time it was countered by SK. They went top lane and, and found them there. Did the Gromp, had the 2v2 lane. So you got to try and aim to do the same for Unicorns of Love. Potentially walk in, get some deep ward, see if you can spot where the dual lane from SK Gaming is going, and then get down to the opposite lane. You don't want that 2v2 matchup. Well, definitely not. I do want to just cut you off there because the uh, technical issue that we had was related to the Unicorns of Love team speak audio and their ability to communicate. I believe we're going to have a redo on those picks and bans, at least the last couple. I'll get production to confirm that for me in a second as we do jump back into picks and bans in a moment or two. So maybe the last few will change. We'll find that out very, very shortly. I don't expect them to. I think no. the Unicorns were very comfortable yeah. with their team composition. And as you've already highlighted, if they play safe and if they don't give up the same things they gave up in game two, their team comp has this room to scale. We may have to oh, come they, back yeah, yeah. and say that as many times. They were yeah. so heavily outscale SK game. It's not even funny in terms of late game team fights. If you look at how they're going to play them out with double tank, kite composition, and no real hard engage from SK gaming, it's going to be once again flanks. I'm lying a bit. There's an Annie, so there's some hard engage, yeah. but that's where you get a QSS in the late game or Mikhail's on your support, and then suddenly theory, that kind of stops. Vardex took a while last time. That's true. But for SK Gaming, it's going to be about flanking with a Lee Sin and a Shivana to start the fights, and then hope that the enemy AD carry does not get an early QSS so yeah. your Zed can actually kill him when the fight starts. And yeah. then, of course, for SK, it's not even 5 on 5, it's skirmish. It's picking off people, yeah. it's fighting them one on one, 2v2. 
which is SK's flavor. That is, is what exactly they what they like to do. Control the lanes. I remember you drawing on the Telestrator a few weeks back, the little hey. arrows, and saying how they can quickly change between mid to top to bottom, depending yeah. on where the there thing. are opportunities. They are a bunch of bullies when they play 1-3-1, yeah. because one, they push you into a corner, and they just stand there, and they keep you in that corner, and they don't allow you to get out, because they push you down There's the base, and then you just move so quickly between the lanes. There is a saying, uh, when you push an animal into a corner is when they are most dangerous. Does the theory hold true for unicorns? Not if you look at game two. Well, there you Already go. Already then. There we go. Unicorns are not so, animals. Confirmed. <laughs> Deficio calling it that we're going to go to game five. Not so confidently, but you think SK got the tools oh, to push no, no, us no, to that no means. match. I'm, I'm not going to call the winner here because Come on. SK Gaming, with their comp here, they have to be able to make plays and have to be able yeah. to snowball. If you go for a dive on the top side, which Unicorns of Love can predict, and they counter it and get a few kills, and suddenly the whole thing is just done. Like, that's it. you technically already gotten so far behind with your comp here, which has no room for mistakes from SK Gaming, that it's very tough for you to do anything. Unicorns of Love have done a great job reading them. Chogaf walking down bottom lane, found him in a jungle. Yep. The diving game, too, on the top side where they came in and got two kills. They had to invest a teleport for it and gave up the bottom tower, but they read the dive coming from SK. They need to keep doing the same. And as I was talking about, if you have defensive wards, you're going to see the move from a Z and a Lee Sin when they go towards the top side. You can react to it in time. The question is just, can you do anything against it? Well, we'll find out. They did not have the wards that were needed for the only game that SK has won this series, so a lot has to change for Unicorns of Love, but you do feel that the changes are manageable. Unicorns have shown they can play safe, they can play smart, because they've done it in two games of the three already, and we'll see if they can do it in this particular game. Just to give you guys an update, we are back into picks and bans. The guys are rattling through those, so we should hopefully get them up in the not-too-distant future. Nothing has changed thus far. There's, of course, Shivana, Thresh, Jinx, and the Lee Sin, and we should see these coming in very quickly. Yeah, expect exactly the same from the Unicorns. I think they're happy enough doing Orianna into the Z matchup. When you run Exhaust and you can still go for that early arm guards, it's very tough for Z to kill you. And then your main objective is secure your own blue buff when it spawns the second time. So you can push out the wave and don't allow Zed to just push it into your tower, which is what the Chogaf did against Orianna in the last matchup, and that opens up for rooms. That's basically your only job, and just get all the farm you need. Unicorns invested heavily into early pink wards in the last game, despite not being able to defend them. I think that's something you have to adjust as well. You don't want to give up the entire river to SK, but then you place your green wards and you push, you take your pink wards and move them a bit further back, near your own entrance to your own jungle instead where SK has to overextend slightly to kill them. Well, a lot of pressure. We've broken down all of the decision-making and the things that could affect these two team compositions. As we did say, there was a communication error, and I will get a confirmation from production shortly. I believe the last couple of picks were available to change. That is, in fact, going to be an Orianna change, so denying that one from Power of Evil, I personally yeah, like the fact They've got more AP, but now they've given away the team comp that won game one, very similar at least, to Unicorns of Love. Yeah. So I understand the, the change SK made, because they were afraid of the fact that if they didn't manage to snowball early on, Unicorns would have a fantastic late game. But we still sit in that situation. Okay, the change here for SK is the fact there's no black shield from Unicorns of Love to block a potential flash tippers engage or Blocker Shivana jumping in on to either Power People or Vardax. That's gonna make it better for them to start fights compared to in game one where we had the same setup from the Unicorns of Love. But they're gonna play the same way. Tier, Loot and Zeko for Power People, hit level 11, then you start grouping and you start sieging down. Every ulti for him chunks people so hard that Jinx will get time to take down these towers here. Main engage from SK is either gonna be flash tables from Enraided or we're gonna have flanks coming in from the Lee Sin and Shavana to start it. They're going to have to be able to pull this one off. If you get it, the likes of a Mikhail's for Hillisang, if you get a QSS for your carries, suddenly there's fl the, the flash tapers dies out. But then we have to go really late game now. And that's where Unicorns will then still have the edge in that situation. Well, there's your two team compositions, everybody. You guys know what to do at home. At LOL Esports, hashtag SKWin or hashtag UOLWin. Will it end here? Will Unicorns go 3-1 and do battle with Fnatic in the finals? Or will SK pull it back to a game five?
Do you want to give you guys just an update? As we load up onto the rift, as we mentioned, that technical error regarding the communication meant that the last three picks in the pick ban rotation were permitted to be modified. And that is the reason that SK opted to lock in the Orianna instead of the Zed this time round. As a result, Power of Evil decided to go with Cogmore. And that is why we have that small difference. And we're very interested to see Power of Evil's positioning against a Lee Sin and a Shivana. I'm less hopeful than in game one. But Unicorns had such a great game and they showed that they really do know how to play around the uh, sniping artillery of Power of Evil. And SK Gaming has shown now three games, or well, two games, that if they don't have an assassin in the mid lane that can make plays on the map, they're very passive in the early game and simply don't seem to get the same leads we're used to watching from them. Now we're back on an Orianna here for SK Gaming. So this mid lane matchup is not going to involve a whole lot of action, except for the fact that maybe Svensk Svensk can join in, try and force a flash from Power of Evil, who's obviously running Ghost Flash for himself. We know what Unicorns of Love wants to do. Standard setup, we farm. We farm some more, we put defensive wards, then we farm a little bit more. <laughs> and then we hit level 11 on Power Beaver and we say, let's go boys, and we start killing people. Well, start your timers. Let's see if Power of Evil can do it again. We are going to get those standard lanes. Caitlyn, Annie going to start off the bottom half with those Krugs. We do see Chachi jumping into the jungle. Take away the Wolves. Freddy on the Raptors. This is, once again, same story that you said to Fischio in the current meta. It's all about the lanes, and your jungler has to find a way to impact the game. We need some, some way of getting the mid laners to do a camp as well. <laughs> and then everyone starts in the jungle. And then we finally show the junglers who's the boss. It's the laners. Well, it's always the jungler's fault when you lose. It is. Everybody knows that. If you steal the camps and it's all equal, then there you go. So Kicker starts it off on his red buff. Level Move 2 gank around. again, no flash Shivana, already used TP. Level 2 Scion. This is going to be worth very bad for Freddy. A flash bear slap, that is the question. He's going to How run is he going to escape? I mean, there's there red buff, bear. there's red CC. Red buff plus slap plus knock up, no flash away. Freddy, well... I mean, okay, okay, okay. So, when you're SK Gaming and you already played Udia once, we did a level 2 gank, red buff level, uh, level 2 gank. When you watched the game last week, where there was also an Udia doing red buff level 2 gank, you have to tell yourself, we're playing against him again. Where's he going to start? Well, in order for him to do the level 2 gank, which we have to be afraid of, he's going to start on the top side. What do we need to do then? We need, when, once we get to the lane, we have to place a ward. Otherwise, there is such a high chance he sits there and he kills our no flash top laner. Zero respect for that one. First one, Fischio, the love. Freddy has constantly shown that he can be in trouble, or he can play so really. Oh, Hillisite, wow! He's hooked Forgiven! The Flame Chompers get them both! Fardax gets ignited, Forgiven is gonna 90 caliber away. Hillisite's running him down, Summon a heal is up. One more rocket! Fardax has done it! Fardax and Hillisite have 2v2'd, enraged and Forgiven. Now Fardax will go down to Sven Skeren as he's trying to save the day for SK. But Hillisite, death sentence to safety. Sven's not done yet. I lied, he is. Sven gets one in reply. But Vardax and Hillisung, three yeah. games, they've done it again. They get an early advantage. It's the same setup here. They know that Annie Caitlin Lane wants to poke them on the tower. So they wait just when the minions are about to die. They hook and pull them in with the trap. And you have enough CC to keep them under that tower. That's going to switch over to them. Not a whole lot's going to happen in the mid lane. I just want to go back very quickly to Freddy because his <laughs> ward was on cooldown, like he said, his, his totem was. But that's why you go back all the way to level one, and then when do you place your ward? Well, you need to make sure you have yours ready in the laning phase for that level two gang. So, for the people calling that one out, still not an excuse. Ooh. You'd make a very, I'm just saying he's done it so many times. You'd make a very good disappointed father. Kikis is done Oh, now. there's he's the gonna... flash, there's the bear, there's the slap, that's worth it. Freddy, zero, two, no flash, but, you can't really no, no, no. prepare no, no, no. for that, that one. one you cannot do you a whole can't lot again. prepare for that one. I agree. 
It's only the first but one. But look, bottom lane, Hillisang and Vardags, they're in trouble. Enraged's got the stun, Sven's got the sonic wave. They're chasing him down, but he's still alive. That death sentence went wide, but they managed to survive a few seconds longer. Unicorns, three and one, kills, top, jungle, and ADC. They're off to a great start with a comp that, in theory, could have been bullied around a little in the respective lanes. Still very, very far behind in the bottom lane, despite getting that kill. 30 CS for Forgiven is not exactly going to get a lot better for the Unicorns of Love in that situation. But what they're doing so well is they look at a losing matchup from the, from the last game. They're signing to Shivana, which ended up in Freddy just taking a tower on his own. Obviously, also looking at the fact he's not running with a flash because of the smite. So they decide to camp that lane, and I like that from the Unicorns of Love. That's been smart. Question is just, can Hillisang and Vardax slowly claw their way back in this lane? Because Annie and Caitlyn is still going to be such a bully lane. Oh. This is a nice hook, and he gets it here. I feel like we've seen this before so many times this series. Not respecting the hook. And it is just not a good day for Enrated. However, however, do not forget, this is exactly how Game 2 started, with Unicorns of Love gaining an advantage after an advantage in one or two lanes. And all of a sudden, once Enrated was able to get his um, uh, Righteous Glory, they made impactful engages. So let's give it some time and see what SK can do. There's a Chachi with level 6. He's dived in with that unstoppable onslaught. Takes way too many turret shots and is forced to fall backwards, but trying to set up a kill, not securing it this time. It's funny with Vardex on this Jinx. <laughs> because he will always lose the lane in terms of farm, but he will always get so many kills because of Hillisang setting it up for him. It's such a good combination for them. With that chain CC, he's still really, really far behind. <laughs> if you look at the gold between them, they're honest, they're even now in terms of gold. Two kills for one, but so much farm for Forgiven on this Caitlyn. Perfect example of a carry being carried by a support. But look in the middle lane, Deficio. Sven Skeren is sneaking himself away and actually forced a flash yeah. and the ghost from Power of Evil. But here comes Hillisang and Kickers. I didn't even see them. We do see Fox get caught by the flay, but no follow-up. No hook to try and bait a flash out. Not this time around, but all of the summon is blown for Power of Evil as Fox yeah. is level 6. And this happened against Gambit as well for him, man. We're going to have to see Svenskeren come back to this mid lane now. Use the fact there's no summoners on Power of Evil on an immobile mid laner and gank him. You have to try and get a lead then in the mid lane that way. Because you got the lead and you're going to get level 6 fairly soon for him as well. Go in, ward jump behind him, kick him back. And oh, that's another hook. wow. We can see that one connecting, but there's a lot of minions still in front. And despite the hook landing, it does not result in a favorable trade. All props to Forgiven in that one. McKenna and just moved in, took the tower aggro. The plan was to pull Forgiven in there. But good guy Canna Minion is the hero. Saving the day today. But Unicorns of Love maintain a gold lead. They're down summoners in this middle lane. And Sven Skirin, when he's on this lease in, he has something to prove. 64 CS to 65. Top lane even, jungle even. Despite the disparity in the bottom lane. Obviously, those kills keeping things favorable for Vardags. Let's see where these items go, because double longsword and 1,600 gold for Forgiven. 1,500 gold for Vardags. We should be hitting those BF swords fairly soon. Really see how Forgiven had a poor back timing. He was obviously forced back because he died, not exactly his own choice. Couldn't farm up that early BF sword. He does have gold for it now, so once he goes back, he's probably going to pick it up. Uh, Should we do fight mid lane? This is not one Unicorns want to take. Kickus is down, and red buff will be transferred. No, oh. not yet. He oh, has to okay. flash for it. Oh, there we go. The turtle shield baiting both of us. We do see Chachi forced to knock Freddy away. He's in retreat. There's the shield up. Freddy, despite 0-2 down, is winning the trade. Super Mega Death Rocket goes out. Forgiven. Body blocks that one. It's action across the map but it does not result in more than just one kill. Here comes Spin. Can he land the Sonic Wave? I'm willing to bet that he can. He's got Flash available. He connects, follows in. We do not see the kill going out yet. Ignite is burning. Sven Skerin gets one. Hillisung the not heal. able to reply because Forgiven heals him, keeps him up. 
This is game two all over again. Sven Skeren has got the biggest backpack in Europe and he's putting SK in it. He's so good in this champion and Unicorns of Love, we talk about how they don't want to fight in that mid lane in the 2v2 situation. Did it anyway, ends up dying for it. And then the bottom lane, as we've seen time and time again, just getting pushed in and poked down. Give it here. The longest chase yes, in yes. Europe. Run, chicken. Run, chicken. By chicken, I mean the Phoenix stance, of course. Just to clarify. But they get Dragon. I think forgiven for Dragon. That's a fair trade. Unicorns of Love, five kills to four. They are now down in gold. They've lost a tower. They've lost a dragon. And all of that early aggression has been nullified. Completely. All thanks to Svenskern. First winning a fight in the mid lane. He then knows there's no jungler. So there's no chance of a counter gang in the bottom lane. And he could walk down, fight between the two towers. Unicorns of Love is going to regret that one. Because it ended up costing him three kills. But picking a fight in the mid lane. A whole bunch of them going on to Sven Skeren again. He's finished up that warrior, enchant, trailblazer, and got himself a sight stone. The rest of SK picking up a few key items here. Athenes and Holy Grail picked up for Fox, needlessly large rod for Power of Evil. He's going the same item build, thus far at least, that we saw earlier in the day. It's gonna be Luna's Echo again, yeah. Can go for Leandre's second, despite not building Rhylai's and not really having any slows to give you the double damage from the Leandre's, it's still simply just to poke people down. I mean, obviously he has his own E slow, but that's not what you're expecting to land with the long range of the ulti. But his whole goal is just to poke people down, force them back to base, and you can fight over objectives then with a numbers advantage if you're the Unicorns of Love. And as we saw in the last game, or well, the last time we played it, when he got 10-0, in the end, you just start walking around almost two-shotting people with your ulti. Who and Ray died. I don't know how many times to it. It's going to be a long time before he can get to that point in this game, I feel. Mm -hmm. Unicorn's not in the same level. Or in the same position, I think is a better word. And also, Svenskeren and Lee, he really, really finds opportunities. He's, he's in the right place at the right time. I think Kikis has done a good job in this video so far. But truthfully, Sven Skeren is able to respond. It looks like they're going to trade towers if nobody from Unicorns can respond. There's four, three members on this bottom lane. Everyone dodges the knockup. There is a cannon minion there as well. A lot of damage being traded in this inner turret. We did see Bardex get the top lane. If Chachi sticks around, he could get jumped on this. Sven, he's landed the Sonic Wave. He's actually going to follow it in. But mostly just to keep him away. Rest of Unicorn still unable to react. Chachi's decided to engage on the Sven Skeren. Decimating Smash is not going to land a knockup. Power of Evil's got no. Oh, nice. that's a flash oh. hook! Forgiven gets caught. He's played backwards. We do see the command protect. It is going to be Shockwave on Chachi alone. Despite the flash hook engage, there's not enough damage to get the kill. Now Freddy has found one. Power of Evil's taken Forgiven, but the Captain Surprise is all that's left. He's split. He's not going to get inrated. And that's going to end up being a three for one. As Chachi and Hillisung went aggressive, maybe they really should not have. Well, the thing is, it looked good for the Unicorns with the flash hook here, but the problem was the Power People and Kickers were taking a long way around the wall here, around the Grump as well, so they never managed to get in the fight. When the engage happened, Forgiven stayed alive and turned it around before, in the, before he goes down in the end. They will get a tower though with this Jinx. So the Unicorns, after all, can take down some of the outer turrets. This is a little bit greedy though, going for that blue buff. Just back away, be happy he just got a tower. Oh, Vardags and Kickers in a little bit of trouble. There's a lot of support Lantern here. Coming. This is three versus three. Lantern comes out, Sven follows through. Six, zero, two. Sven Skerritt is unstoppable. Seven, zero, two. Look what he did there. Connects the Q and he waits. He waits for the Lantern and then he activates the second one and flies with it. But this was the Unicorns of Love getting a mid tower and then going for a blue buff. Two guys on their own. Okay, let's see it again. Engage here is fine from Unicorns of Love. They're not looking for a big team fight. They're looking for just one kill and then back away because you can see how Vardax is super far away. But what goes wrong is after they have the hook, Pulse and Forgiven, Kick is looking at him down here. Look at Power Wheel near the Grump. They're so far away. All the Unicorns were looking for was just one kill and then you move away, because you AD carry is gone. He can then push the mid lane, and that completely backfired because he was so split up. Half the team on one side of the wall, the other one in the middle of the lane. 
And then after they take that mid tower, they decide to go blue buff. Two guys on their own. Giving over two more kills now. 7-0 for Svenskern. And he's Danish. Is that really relevant right now? That's the most relevant thing of all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the weirdest segue I've ever heard. 7-0-2. Svenskern on Lee Sin is going massive once again. Mechanically just outplaying all of Unicorns of Love. Every single ability is connected. He's in the right position. He's picking the right fights. Yep. He's, he's bringing utility to SK and creating enough chaos that the rest of SK can position appropriately and, and wrap things up. And he's just punishing Unicorns of Love for trying to fight him. Again, that's the whole thing started with him getting that 2v2 fight around the mid lane where they killed Kikis. Then he walked on bottom and gets two more kills. The 84% voting for Unicorns of Love might end up being a little bit disappointed if SK can keep snowballing. That's still the big question mark because the Unicorns will have a fantastic it's late game. It's simpler than that. If uh, Sven Skerin can keep snowballing. Fair enough. We'll give him that one. But you've got level 11 now in Power of Evil. You have Loot and Zeko. This is your big power spike where you start grouping. Have to see if he can connect the ultis. He's not running Athenes as we talked about in the game one, I believe it was. So you gotta land your ultis here because you don't have enough mana to just keep spamming them. Instead, you're aiming for more burst damage on every single one of them. Freddy, with no TP, has roamed down to the middle lane. The rest of SK are on the dragon. Teleport is being channeled for Visit Chachi. He also has that ultimate available to him. He's off on the side lane. Kickers is pulling off the attention of three members of SK, but they have not secured the dragon. The kickback after the flash forward, Svenskeren is going to allow Forgiven to drop down Kickers. Now the rest of Unicorns are in full retreat. That's a flash stun from Inrated, and SK are running amok. Two members caught up by the shockwave. The Fox is now out of mana, but it doesn't matter because Power of Evil is down. This has gone so wrong for Unicorns of Love. They've lost three members in the fight, the Dragon, and they get out clean. SK Gaming are dismantling the magical Unicorn. You said it before, Trevor, this is game two over again. A Dragon already gone, SK picked it up. Unicorns deciding to go for the fight, despite once again being fairly split up, not landing any poke beforehand from Power of Evil. And SK Gaming with a 7-0 Lee Sin are happy taking the fight, getting a few kills, getting a mid tower, and now big, big goal lead. And you've got to remember, Enrated still does not have his righteous glory. You think of all of the engages in the mid game, he got the stuns onto Power of Evil when Power of Evil was playing that uh, 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 LeBlanc, in fact. Yeah. And if Enrate can do that again, it's going to be even easier. So we talk about it's a big power spark, Power of Evil hitting 11 and having Loot and Zeko, but that's when you sit and poke, not when you go for an all-in fight, because you need so much more time to poke people down. So Unicorn's going in for this one. You can see how uncoordinated it was even from the start. Half the team was already near SK Gaming. The other one was trying to run through a choke point. And SK Gaming, they punish you for it. They take the fight, beautiful shockwave, and start cleaning house. Well, uh, SK Gaming will be very happy with that turnaround. I don't want to... I don't want to talk too soon, but I do have to ask the question. Unicorns of Love have banned the same three champions every single game. Graves, Lucian, Lulu. If you go to a game five and you are red side pick again as Unicorns of Love, is Lee Sin worth banning? We'll explore that thought a little later. As Freddy is able to avoid uh, everything. Kick is unable to run in, Death Sentence doesn't connect. And Unicorns are 6,000 gold down, two towers down, two dragons down, six kills down. We're not even 20 minutes on the clock. This is SK Gaming, we know. And they don't even have an assassin mid lane. This is That's the SK we know without true. an assassin mid lane. They've even got scaling backup with Oriana. But do you need an assassin mid lane when you have an assassin in the jungle? In this case, no for SK Gaming, how fit Sven is, how many plays he's been able to make. And once again also just by Unicorns taking fights. Early game, when they have a fantastic late game, is where SK just punished him so hard. Unicorns of Love able to defend the middle in a turret and SK with a show of force invade the jungle. Getting some very good vision inside the Unicorn's top half of the map. 
as Baron will be spawning shortly, so early on the clock. You can feel that with all the vision control, they could even bait it if they wanted. Despite really not having the tank units for damage, but regardless, don't need to. Rest of SK on the inner turret. Unicorn so scared. Look at the damage on Hillisung. QW, and he simply is not available. SK gonna back away and take control of the rest of the jungle. Yeah, start sitting over around the bottom side whenever the dragon is about to respawn. Can be the next objective for them. And it's gonna be forced unicorns, if they wanna fight, that is, to walk through a jungle you have completely warded up. And while you mentioned the Baron and how they are very squishy, it's very early on, all you wanna do is almost just create the illusion that you could do the Baron. And they have to walk in and check it. So it doesn't even matter if you can take it or not in that case, because if you get enough time, even 20 minutes in, you will get the Baron. You can just juggle the aggro pretty easily for SK Gaming. In that case, also why Unicorns have to place a ward, one outside. Securing the risk Scott as well should give you enough control and vision to see if it is being started. And then instead, focus on this uh, on this dragon. If you go down and you pre-ward it now from the Unicorns, you can sit and poke them with power evil. Problem is, and Red is already there. He's already placed everything SK needs except for the pink wards to say we're gonna see Unicorns coming down. We're gonna get the fight. We can engage on them. They're not going to get to sit and poke us while we try and clear out vision, which is what you have to do for Power of Evil here. Otherwise, you cannot take a fight. We'll see if Unicorns can do it. One minute, 10 seconds on the clock. We did see Vardax pushing out the bottom lane. Chachi and the rest of Unicorns shoved out top, but it has been dealt with as Freddy is now dealing with all of those minions and pushing it back. Teleport's available for both respective top laners. And look at SK's position. They've got deep wards again. The river's warded up. Unicorns have to just go through a almost minefield. Yeah, not going to move not at all. Not knowing where SK could be if they wanted to uh, challenge for it. But you have to think they'll give this one up. They have only challenge on number five because they're simply too far behind at the stage. And that's what happens if you take some of the wrong fights earlier. You get punished simply in the long run for them. So this is going to be another dragon for SK Gaming. Fairly early on until they get the third one. And now they can simply just keep playing around dragons and barons every single time. And then Unicorns at some point is going to be forced to walk into that jungle, try and see if you're doing the baron or the dragon, the fifth one that is in the future. And then SK Gaming can get the perfect flank, which is what they need against a composition that has so much kite. And what we highlighted as, highlighted as one of the problems before the game started, before this happened. And also, I didn't want to predict anything. <laughs> because how are you going to predict that Svenskan will be 7-0 and just well, kill Well, seeing, seeing his two Lee Sin games today, if he gets it again, SK 3-2? Don't know. Don't but know. The worst thing is, it's not even the Lee Sin itself. It could have been a Rek'Sai in this case. It could have been in Italy. Well, Rek'Sai it's couldn't have followed the Lantern. I agree. <laughs> could have knocked him up instead, and then that he wouldn't get to take the Lantern. Touche, I'll give you that. But the problem is more that, again, the Unicorns pick a very slow scaling comp and then take fights. That's why SK Gaming gets all, all, all the gold. So if they pick the same composition for the next game, where they're again, as you said, our, our red side, you think, should have learned from this one. I think we actually have to look at the gold, specifically between Forgiven and Vardax. 227 CS to 169. 9,300 gold to 7,500. That is a massive, massive difference on a guy that started the lane 2 and 1. Vardax is so heavily carried by Hillisang in the laning phase. And yes, he has to deal with Caitlyn Annie, let's be very fair. That is an annoying lane for anybody to deal with. But that is a very, very large amount of CS to be down at the 25 minute mark. Very, very true. In this case, you can see, not really feeling like they have to push any advantage at this point. You got the potential fifth dragon, you got the Baron bait, and you can simply wait for Unicorns to make a move and then try and punish them for it. So if you just push every single lane now, force them down either near their own tier 2 tower or all the way back in base, then you take over the jungle after, and that's what you play around. They're even buying a lot of pink wards, and Freddy upgraded his totem in this game here. I think he didn't do in the last few games he's played. And also some credit to SK for not playing risky. They're not putting themselves in positions where they could get punished. 
However, they are also giving Unicorn some time. Bardex is farming his way up. We see the Haunting guys secured for Power Evil. It's not doing a whole lot against Forgiven. He's landing the odd Living Artillery, and then Forgiven is just sustaining. But to Fischio, we touched on Baron a few minutes ago. There is this threat that we were talking about. Let's see if anyone can get caught out. Kick is trying to run Forgiven down. He's got the Summoner heal already. Teleport comes out from Freddy. Box used to disengage. Sven Skarin, he flashes onto Kickers. That's a dead bear man. Unicorns of Love without their smite and without one of their key frontliners. What can they do? This is still risky off. for SK. You're standing in the Baron pit. Power Weaver can poke you. Cyan can get in there and has the mass amount of CC. He's managed to find Fox. He's going to not get the decimating smash. We do see the death sentence from Hillisung, but it's not enough. Keep your eyes on Vardax and his HP. He's forced to flash away. Vizichach is in trouble. Super Mega Death Rocket does not secure kills, nor does the death sentence. Rocket off the rocket. Enraged plays the sacrificial Whoa. lamp, but it secures a kill onto Vardax as Vardax needed to get those auto attacks down. Not a lot of mana for Power of Evil, so unable to spam those living artilleries. Death sentence connects on his fence, Garen. Will they get the kill credit. It does not look like it. Living Artillery unable to secure the kill in 8-0-4. Despite all of the kills, Unicorn stopped the Baron. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. It was for sure the important one here for them. SK starting it despite still having so many members of Unicorns around it. Look at the damage here onto the back line of SK Gaming. The fact that you lock down one of them and then you start sniping them with Power of Evil. And now they just keep kiting back. The damage is insane. So close to two kills, and the rocket just smacks into the face of Enraided, who ends up going down. So does Vardax, however. And that could have also been very different. I, I'm fairly confident that was a three-man tether stun uh, just in the bottom half of the river. What Enraided is showing is his ability to read mid-game and team fights is significantly better than his laning impact. He always seems to catch targets with Tibbers in the mid-game. And it is very impactful. Still does not have that uh, Righteous Glory completed. Going to give SK more tools. But a little bit of stall. 7,000 gold the lead. Three dragons to zero with a minute and a half until the next one. And look at SK setting up control in the river, in the jungle. Will unicorns be brave enough to fight? I don't think so. But... Well, they're going to be forced into some fights because we can see that SK with their comp, only Shivana can really be a spade pushing threat here. You don't want to put your Orianna on your Caitlyn in one of the side lanes, so it's going to be like a one four setup. That means Unicorns will have to sit and defend with the likes of Power Weaver in the mid lane, try and land some poke, and if they do get them low, they can still start fights. SK is going to be grouped together for the most part, and they have to just dance around the ulties. So we will get the big team, but we're not going to get a spade pushing war where you just slowly lose everything in this sense here. 45 seconds before Dragon. The rest of Unicorns, they're actually sitting on Baron. There's a pink ward in there. There's nothing from SK. Hey, is anybody from SK going to react? This is going to oh, take a very long it. time. Bardex may even run out of mana. They're outside of vision. The thing is, SK, will they smell something's up? Look at the minimap. So there are two guys showing in mid lane, and also SK oh, setting up for comes Dragon. Freddy. Freddy's, Freddy's gonna got spot Dragon's it, descent, 4,000 hit points. The rest of SK are about to react. The They're going to peel away. The desperation play not working out, but now all of a sudden, Freddy's managed to cut off Power of Evil. The rest of Unicorns are sitting Sven in their jungle. Power's trying to get back. Unicorns peeling in their own jungle. Power of Evil unpunished. What was blown other than HP and time? No summoner spells that I can see. Risky, risky play, but it did not yep. backfire. It will be another dragon for SK. What Unicorns here were trying to do was hope that SK would invest everyone on the dragon and just go down and take it, and they would trade it to the fourth dragon for the Baron. Because Freddy walked down through the lane, though, and placed the ward, it was spotted. In the end, cost him a tower, fourth dragon. SK Gaming is back to doing exactly the same they were before. Nothing has changed in the game itself. Other than in six minutes, potential fifth one for SK. I do think all the praise to SK. They gave up kills, did not even matter, right? Freddy is so far ahead in CS, and, and Shivana is just getting beefier and beefier. Sven Skeren, again, backpack. He's just carrying SK. <laughs> that was optimistic. But I think a little bit of forethought for the unicorns. Had SK invested the same amount of people, had the Dragon Timer been a little closer, maybe 
they could have snuck that Baron, but sadly it was not the case. Right. And it means Unicorns are having given up yet, but this is the most ridiculous comeback that would need to happen. This is the Mount Everest of comebacks. 10,000 gold at 30 minutes against the engaged power of a Shivana Lee Sin with a fairly fed, fairly farmed Oriana. So the only problem for SK in terms of closing out the game is when they do start this Baron here, as long as Power Beaver is nearby and SK Gaming doesn't completely control the jungle so he can still walk in fairly safe. You can see there's a ward of the Raptor camp from Unicorns Love, so he can at least walk in there. He can try and land poke when you're stuck in his Baron pit, but he needs to be there now and he's not. He's in the base. So this is a very good Baron start for SK. As long as it's they make gone. sure it doesn't get stolen. And kick is splashed over, gets kicked back. We do see the sonic wave into resonating as Freddy will be able to secure a kill with the help of Forgiven. Now Freddy and Sven Skira, and they're dealing with a couple members of Unicorns of Love. Where's the rest of the team? Freddy's caught out, his Dragon Descent is slowly burning away. Disengage Flame Chompers as Unicorns try to peel backwards. And it's simply not going to be enough. Baron secured. It was destroyed by SK Gaming. And this is gonna allow them to, be, to begin sieging with Baron Empowered Minions. This is the last inner turret standing. And I don't think it'll be standing for particularly long. All the tools to take it down as long as they don't get hit, but too many of these ultis from Power of Evil. That's obviously why they didn't go for the siege before. And we see it engaged despite kick is being very far away. Miller Sang has got a fight with Sven Skerin, but it's not the fight that you want. He's got the tanks at least keeping his attention. Nobody else from Unicorns is there. Death Sentence onto Freddy, but he just gets melted by Fox. Power There's simply not enough damage. Shockwave does not actually connect on anybody as they manage to dodge it and get away. Decimatic Smash goes out. Super Mega Death Rocket. Will it pick up a kill? I don't know just yet. Freddy's down low and Vardax has not been able to fire it. Unicorns get a tower thanks to minions. But SK Gaming do not lose anybody. And they start sieging up the inhibitor turret. No support from Hellasang. Baron Empowered Minions. Again, look at the mana. Power of Evil cannot spam any more of those living artilleries. Death Rocket does nothing. Here comes Chachi. He's teleporting in. He's got no ultimate to chase and instantly stunned as he arrives. Means any form of re-engage is disengaged. Power of Evil is still running, but there's no mana. You're a beautiful butterfly that can do nothing but flap your wings. One more shot. Is it there? No! We do see the Zap go wide, Kickers get shut down by Forgiven, SK Gaming looking to close the game right now. Double kill as Bizachachi forced to run away, does find a lantern. Finally, Power of Evil throws another living artillery, but again, it's just not enough. There is no mana regen, there is no blue buff, and there is no impact once there is no mana. Yeah, very, very true. Unicorns seem like somewhat of a, hey, let's just try and take a fight and see what happens, because they went in when Power Viva was already out of mana in the first place. SK Gaming just kept kiting around. We'll also get, of course, the Gaming gets all the farm. I mean, who else would get it? But the man, 33 minutes in, 100 CS ahead of Vardax. Is that a bear kick? Right, we'll ignore that one then. Uh, 14,000 gold down. Unicorns of Love have only got inhibitor turrets left standing. Is that a thing da 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 Tofficio cares not for my jokes. As SK now need to crack the base of Unicorns. No home guard boots on Power of Evil. The only reason I think that would be relevant is if his wave clear is to help Unicorns defend, he needs to be able to get in and out. Kickers is going to get shut down. If he gets caught out, we don't see the Shockwave picking up a kill, but Sven Skiran unable to connect. He's gonna flash forward and he should be able to solo Vardax. He's got the damage. He Dragon Rage kicks him in the head. In the background, Kikis was taken out by Fox. SK, two men to the good, now sieging up on the middle inhibitor turret. Power of Evil can spam for days, but it's not gonna do anything against SK Gaming. Baron's not even needed and Vizichachi is being dropped out. Wow, Sven Skiran even follows him in. Death Sentence does not connect, Inhibitor's going to drop. Attack into Dissonance, into Auto Attacks, into Fox going godlike. 7 0 10, 9 0 8. Oh. Visit Chachi! Manages to find Pride Rock and gets shut down where he stands. Not even able to get the kill there onto Fox. Fantastic, fantastic performance from SK Gaming. Oi! <laughs> 
the little things that count. That's the confidence kill. It doesn't mean the game is not over yet because of well, that one. Let's be fair. I feel it's a matter of time. Right, right, right. I mean, SK right gaming. now. Enraged trying to get away from this one. Kick is unable to chase with that bear stance. What a fantastic, fantastic turnaround. Freddy's even picked up a face of the mountain, if I'm looking at that correctly. It's going to be a dragon now for unicorns. And okay, so they'll delay Dragon 5. I don't think that's a... Well, we'll see. Teleport coming in from Freddy. This is not a done right. deal. Remember, he has Sven spikes. is going to steal this one. Calling it right now. Sven to steal, Deficio. We'll keep our eyes on him. Bardag's low. Power of Evil running out of mana. Kick back from Kicker. Sven Skarin. He's got Smite available, got the help. He's gonna go back in, Sven steals. Well, secures it, that's not really a steal. Dragon Bad number on. five, 22 kills to eight. There is nothing left to hold SK back. Unicorns of love. Have to bounce back and have to dig deep. We are going to a game five, both semi-finals in Europe. Okay, wait, Joe, wait. SK, let's finish it first. Then we'll get to the hype moments. Let's agree with that. I'm getting excited for this. Well, if they do group five now, we're walking to the pace of the unicorns of love. So Fisher is least and worth banning. No. Playing correctly in the early game is what you should do. They've not done it both times. Lee has been there. No, but then he picks Rek'Sai. He destroys you. He picks Nidalee. He destroys you. I mean, if, if, okay. if you lose because you take bad fights in the early game against a composition that's a lot stronger in the early stages of the game, because of the jungle pick, if you look at the, the match between the two junglers, well, I hate to say it, but it's not like Lee Sin is an OP pick. I do think Sven is fantastic on it. Yep. But it's not the champion. It's the player. It's the player here for me. Here comes Chachi! There goes Chachi! <laughs> Unicorns of Love tried to make one last ditch heaven. It does not work. Shockwave connects. Bardax is booted backwards. Here comes Freddy. The Death Rocket does not secure death for anybody. Chachi in the back line trying to hold off Spence Kieran. Will he go down? And yes, he will. It's Hillisung that gets the shutdown goal. But it is too little too late. As Unicorns of Love, their base is in tatters. Super Minions onto the Nexus Turret as they continue the fight. It's a two for one as one last Nexus Turret is standing. It is being shredded away by the Tibber's Bear and Forgiven. Forgiven founds Power of Evil. He takes him down. The Nexus is being shredded. And Deficio, we are going to game five. Just like in game two, SK Gaming change up the pick and ban phase, get more lane pressure here. The Caitlyn pick now twice instead of the Tristana. It means they're destroying the bottom lane into the farm. They do give up a few kills here and there. Bottom lane, despite all the, oh sorry, the top lane. We had all the ganks early on from Kikis. Gave a great start. However, it just wasn't enough because then you started fighting around the mid and the bottom lane where you were still weaker because of this Lee Sin pick or just because of an early jungler for Svenskern. I'm not I wouldn't be surprised to see it being banned just because you feel like that's the champion doing all the work. Yeah. But I still think it's more the player knowing when to invade in, when to pick the fight and just punish Unicorns of Love for clearly not knowing it, seeing as it's two games now where they take early fights despite having the late game scaling composition, which is very strange because that's something between the games, uh, you know, as a team and a coach, you, you discuss and say, okay, guys, okay, we have a comp like this. Don't try and look for these early fights here. Also, credit to well, SK. I guess we are making it a little yeah, bit harder exactly. for them because SK is forcing them on. Correct. Them. That's what I was going to say. It's not like, just unicorns like running at them. Unicorns are, are committing to the fights that Sven Skeren is starting. Yes. I think that's I think the that's best how way we should to, say it. to explain it because Sven is finding every single opportunity. If somebody's left a door unlocked or a window open, he is sneaking his way into the unicorns area of the map and simply running amok. When, because when every lane is pushing, row. when every lane is pushing to the enemy tower, nothing can stop you from running in. You're not afraid of the Udyr. Like he can do whatever he wants, and they can't roam from the lanes because they're standing there farming under their towers. So he gets to to, to force these fights here on the unicorns, and they take them yeah, and get that's punished for the case. it. So clearly, for SK Gaming going into the last game here, somewhat of the same setup here. Can still be an assassin mid lane, which I think is the best for SK Gaming. Not that Orianna here was bad, because they're also yeah. a takeaway, I guess, from the Unicorns of Love in, in that situation. But more of the same style. And if, if you can't win that lane 2v2, and if you fall this far behind in farm, despite getting kills, yeah. I'd much rather try and see you go for that lane, so at least try it. 
So you don't end up in this situation where you just fall that far behind. And then it's just a matter of time before someone walks down and kills you. There are so many things to consider for both of these teams. We'll find out what they decide to do. We are going to a game five. And for a look at how we got there, let's kick it back over to the analyst desk. I like your wording there, kicking it back over to us because it was Lee Sin that was kicking it for SK Gaming. I mean, <laughs> Sven Skaren single-handedly putting SK Gaming on his back and keeping them in the series. Absolutely, that's what big players do. It's a semi-final in the playoffs. If you're clutch and you're a big player, you just do what Sven Skaren does. Put your team on the back and just carry them home. Yeah, again, like I've been using the word a lot, but he's been a monster. Like when you have a star player like Sven Skarin, like uh, he's just been really been able to step up, and like he's the reason why they've won both of those games so far. Playing absolutely out of his mind, insanely good player. Yeah, constantly searching for picks, and as said before, he's not afraid of the Udir. If he finds the Udir early game in the jungle, he just kills him. The Udir has nothing to put against him besides the bear slap, and that's not really doing that much damage. So he's just constantly invading, looking for opportunities, looking for picks, looking to help his lanes, and he's doing everything right. Yeah, uh, for me, for the side of UOL, it was kind of a blueprint of game two, where they got an early advantage, Lee Sin went absolutely ham, uh, and in game two, they, well, they picked a lot of fights that they shouldn't too fast. I think here they tried to calm down at least, but at this point the Lee Sin was, I guess, too far ahead? Well, no, the, like, the, the, yeah, I agree. The Lee Sin was actually doing a really good job of babysitting the dual lane, because uh, in the 2v2, uh, it, it seemed like uh, Vardags and Hillisang were, you know, controlling the pace, but when they were looking for opportunities to go in and Hillisang would land a CC, it was uh, Sven Skaren right there to, you know, shut it down, saying, no, 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 if you guys are going to commit, you're going to die. He was there to turn the first, or not first blood, but one of the early kills into a one-for-one. One. Uh, just phenomenal play out of him. Yeah, and if you try to gank a forgiven lane, then you better do it right. <laughs> because he was constantly pushing them into their own turret, and if you want to gank that lane, you got to be a damn good jungler to make it work. And Sven Skyrim was just always there for the counter ganks. Whenever they tried to engage, he was there, being there for their dual lane and then just getting them a hat. On the other side, Unicorns, Udia was doing a really great job. They had level two gank twice in a row. The first time it didn't succeed on bot lane. Second time, Freddy, no flash, easy kill. And then he just tried to be a factor in the games. But Sven Skarin, just too strong this game, I guess. Yeah, and I can't help but think with one extra level of protection on Udir, he could have maybe made the difference. Yeah, I think he was missing a shield. I don't know. Uh, uh, not having the Morgana or the Oriana on the team uh, just makes the pick a bit worse. Uh, obviously, uh, when you're able to apply both shields into Udir, he can just run through and do anything he wants. And it was shown that game that he didn't quite have the power that he needed. Yeah, if you're an Udir and you're running into a team composition and you have that Oriana shield on you with the constant threat of the Shockwave coming in, that it creates a whole lot of pressure. If you're just an Udia running into four with a Korkma spitting from behind, it's not that much pressure. So it definitely made a difference, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So looking at the last game, Game 5, Unicorns of Love are for the last time also on the red side. This time SK Gaming did decide to ban out the, the Morgana as an adaption together with the Cassiopeia and the Hecarim. Are we expecting that Morgana ban to come out again? Yeah, definitely. It's, Hillisan is just an MVP performer on that Morgana, and if you're SK Gaming, you want to take that away from him. Yeah, exactly like he said. Uh, the Morgana, the the Black Shields are on point. The the Bindings create opportunities not only in lane, but outside of lane as well for the team to follow up and find those opportunities to create plays outside of objective timers. And just taking him away from that, it increases your chances of winning. All right, and on the side of the Unicorns of Love, kind of counterintuitive that the games you won is because you took it slow, and here you also had to take it slow, which is not the way they like to play, but they have done it greatly. What do you think their game plan should be in Game 5? Because we've mentioned so much about the Gouda and the Cheese before we got into this series, but there has been absolutely nothing of that. I mean, this could be the game where we see it coming out. I mean, we know that they dare to do it. In the promotion tournament versus Millennium, there was a poppy in game three at the brink of defeat. Is there any team that's going to go crazy? It could be the Unicorns. Yeah. I mean, against Gambit Gaming, they close it out with the Shaco. It would just be fair if they do it this time. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I think what's, what it's going to come down to is uh, it's going to be important for them to make sure that they get on the right side of the jungle draft. Uh, I don't think it'll be good for Unicorns of Love if they put Sven Skirin on a champion that can out-duel Kikis, because uh, we've sh it's been shown so far in the series that when S uh, when Sven Skirin, uh has a favorable matchup, he can just solo carry the game. Absolutely. Unicorns of Love are investing two bands into Forgiven. Forgiven... He does what he always do. He's a solid performer. He has a lot of farm. But do you really want two bans for him? He's warm on those champions now. He's warm on the Caitlyn. He's warm on Tristana. Maybe just leave those two champions open and ban some junglers instead. Take that Lee Sin away. 
I don't agree because I think that the the bottom lane matchup when they went two versus two because of Hillisang, it has been in the favor of the Unicorns of Love and not by a tremendous amount, but always enough. I think if you put Forgiven on a Graze or a Lucian, you are in for some trouble still, even in this game five. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to have to side with Shocks on this one because you were looking at the, the 2v2 and I'm saying like uh, the UOL bot lane is beating SK's bot lane in the 2v2. So just keep the bands the way they are. Keep the 2v2 going the way it is and then just make sure that you have the advantage in either the 1v1 duo out of the jungle or make sure that your draft composition wins the 3v3. Yeah, that's right. But if you have that 2v2 win and you have a Sven Skaren ganking for you seven times, then it doesn't really matter if you took away the Grave and the Lucian. You got to do something about Sven Skaren. Yeah, that's true. Point accepted. We'll see what they decide to go with. SK Gaming, they have climbed back to take this series to a game five. It all comes down to this. So don't touch that browser. We'll be right back. Oh my god, Pino, I haven't hit one for like 15 banana moves. Oh. Hillisang's running him down. Summon a heal is up. One more rocket. Fardax has done it. Fardax and Hillisang have 2v2'd and rated and forgiven. Now Fardax will go down to Sven Skaren as he's trying to save the day for SK. Can he land the Sonic Wave? I'm willing to bet that he can. He's got Flash available. He connects, follows in. We do not see the kill going out yet. Ignite is burning. Sven Skaren gets one. Hillisang the not heal. able to reply because forgiven heals him. Power of Evil's got no... Oh, oh that's a flash oh. hook. Forgiven gets caught. He's Played backwards. We do see the command protect. It is going to be Shockwave on Chachi alone. Rumble, there's a lot of support here. Coming. This is three versus three. Lantern comes out. Sven follows through. 6 0 2. Sven Skeren is unstoppable. Sven Skeren is going to allow Forgiven to drop down kickers. Now the rest of Unicorns are in full retreat. That's a flash stun from Inrated. And SK are running a map. Deficio, we are going to game five.